What's up everybody, I'm Justin Muncy and today I'm going to be showing you how I use my RJM Mastermind to control Ableton. So if you don't have an RJM, this might not be the video for you, but if you do, you could probably take some of the ideas I have and make it work for the system you need. So uh, let's dive into it. I'm going to pull up my computer here and uh, you're going to get a look at my vision board. So you're lucky. All right. Well, as promised, this is my vision board so you can get a look into my personal life. You're welcome. These are all the things I aspire to. Here we go. Let me, uh, let me pull this up here. Open recent, just a month. See, this is my life. Okay, cool. All right, so you're gonna wanna open up to the device page. As you can see, I've got four here. We have the three Strymons, the Mobius, the Big Sky, and the Timeline. And then the fourth is gonna be our Ableton rig. So you, you can make it any device, whatever you have, it doesn't really matter. So over here in device type, you're gonna wanna select generic, and it's gonna default to this PC CC device. Uh, in settings, you can name it. For me, I did MIDI channel 5 because that was the unused MIDI channel. You can select any one you want. Just make sure it's different from your other MIDI devices because you know you're gonna get some weird signals. And then yeah, MIDI port, I want you wanna do USB. So yeah, that's USB. And uh, yeah, that's it for this page. Then under global. You're gonna wanna increase your max button page. I believe the default is three, so you'll see that right here. I, I just made one up, seven. It doesn't really matter, but you're gonna need some more uh, if you're gonna make it the same way I did. All right, so then you're gonna wanna roll over to your buttons page here, and that's where you have the different pages for the devices. So as you can see, what I did do is I added a repeat button here, and then I also changed my switches button around. So it now says Ableton. And then I moved the switches page to a hold function. So all that really means is if I tap the button, instead of it flipping to the switches page like at default, it's gonna switch straight over to my Ableton page. And then if I hold the button down, it'll go to the switches page. All right, let's page up. So these are, these are your loops. Okay, page three, yep. That is your switches page by default. So I'm gonna leave that be. Page four, here we go, that's Ableton. That's where I put mine. That's why you're gonna need that extra page over in Global. Across the top, I have a play button here, a stop button, a solo click button. And then right here, page up, page down, is how I'm gonna scroll for when I have songs above five. So yeah, as you can see, I just did like the presets, the songs across the bottom here. Uh, that's what made the most sense to me, but like I said, you can you can move this around any way that makes sense for you. So I'm just going to go button by button and show you what I did. Let's start with song, because you, you just apply this across all five. So right here, I'm going to double click on song. My button mode is normal, and then my button type is an instant action. Under IA settings, I have it under momentary, remote control, and IA link. You're going to want to select that. Then you're going to go down here and add a new action. So the action type you're going to want to add is a note and then you're going to select your device Ableton and then you're going to assign it a note number. In this case I did one and then I put velocity 127. I'm pretty sure if you put one it'll still work. I just put it all the way up and that's going to be song one right there. And then in the normal mode here this is just like for you. Uh, your, your customizations. You're gonna do that across the bottom. So here in button two, same thing. You're just gonna change the note number. So note number two, cool. Song three, note number three, same. So you get it. This is, yeah, I named it presets. So what it's gonna do is just flip me back to my presets page. So I have it under momentary here, same normal IA. So right here, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna do a system action. So you're gonna put system and then page, and then you're gonna put the page number you wanna to go to. For me, my guitar presets are on page one, so I put page one. Let's say yours are on page seven, you would put seven there. And then the next button is play. So for play, you're gonna do normal, instant action, momentary remote control IA, that's the normal. So here we're gonna add a second command. So note number, uh, you know, once again, pick, pick one you haven't used, I put 11. So once I press play on Ableton, I want to go straight back to my guitar preset page, but I want to do it the least amount of buttons clicked. So I mean, automatically once the song starts, I'm going to just start playing guitar, work on MD. 
So I added a second function here. So the system action here is gonna flip you back to page one, um, the way I have it set, and that's my guitar preset page again. So if yours is on page three, you would put three. And then for me, cause I didn't wanna put a bunch of tape on my RJM, although you can do that and that's totally fine. Green means go to me. So I have the off color as green, as you can see. So it'll stay lit up green. So basically if I've just pressed that button, it's gonna play where the marker's at and then it's gonna flip me automatically back to my guitar preset so I can just be playing guitar. The next button I have is a stop button. I put this in line with the mute switch cause I'm just uh, used to having that be there. You gonna double click on that. Um, yeah, so for me here, I thought it would make sense for it to not flip back to the guitar page because if I'm stopping the track, either I'm at the end of the song and we're switching to a new song that I don't have a transition set up for, or I'm killing the track because we're off. And potentially, I don't know, I might, I might want to just stay there and restart. Uh, I don't know. You, you can put that flip back page if you want. All right, over here I have a solo click. So the idea behind this was, hey, rather than let's just kill everything in our ears if you know we get off track, the singer comes in early, whatever that might be, it'd be nice to just have click. So I assign this to the solo button on my click track in my Ableton session. So when I press this, it'll just solo the click. So we won't have the cues, so it won't be like distracting, cause I don't know, let's say we're a measure head and it's like verse, but it's not correct? That won't happen. We'll just have click, which to me is better than nothing. So let's go inside here, double click on that. And you'll see I have pretty much the same thing across. I just picked blue because uh, in my Ableton session, when I press solo, it's blue. So to me, that made sense. Down here, once again, different Ableton note. And then I also added the flip back because the idea for me is, well, if I solo the click, we're probably still playing. So I want to be able to go straight back to my guitar stuff and not worry about pressing extra buttons to get there. So I added that system action again for it to flip back to page one. All right, over here we have page up and page down. Clicking on it, page up. Okay, so yeah, we have normal and then the button type I picked, page up. So like, let's go back to this page. If you press that page up, it's just gonna go up here. So. I have Ableton 5 through 10, which I haven't set up yet because I haven't needed to do more than five songs. And over here, page down, uh, yeah, it's once again, didn't have to change much. I just changed the button type to page down. And all this is gonna do is minus it. So in this case, if I press it on this page, it's gonna go down here to my switches pages. But you know, the idea of that is like, if I'm on page five and for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe I went to the wrong page and I need to hit song four and press the page down and it's gonna go here. And that's what I've got going on for my Ableton pages. So let's go back to the first page here. I, I switched some things around. So right over here, as I said, I changed the switches button to a hold function. You can move this wherever you want, but I'm gonna show you how I did that because I didn't know how to do that and I took some trial and error, so this might save you some time. So let's go into here, double click it. So you're gonna wanna change the button to hold. Click here, hold functions. That took me a while to figure out. Your button type is an IA. You're gonna go down here, momentary remote control IA link. And then I named it switches for me. You know, once again, you can change the colors. And then you're gonna go down here for the action. It's a system action. And you're just gonna add system page and then whatever page your switches is. If, if that's what you want, you can make it do whatever you want. The only other thing I added is a hold function over here on my global preset. So the idea behind the repeat is without having to get crazy in clip mode where like, you know, people do arranging on the fly in Ableton and that's wonderful. I've never been in a church setting where we would need that. However, there have been times where it would have been cool to be able to repeat a chorus while we were already big or down. And so the idea behind this is you can create markers in your Ableton session and then set a couple different MIDI functions that will set off a different set of cues. We call them dynamic cues. And then it will also hit the button that basically moves you back to the previous marker. But the idea behind this is you, if the singer says it at any given moment, we're gonna repeat that chorus, you just have to hold this button down and it's gonna send a MIDI signal. It's gonna switch on the dynamic cues, switch off the normal cues, and then activate a MIDI track where I have assigned notes to basically flip it back. If you can name this church logo, then kudos to you, let's be friends. 
I do my sessions in arrangement mode. I think it makes more sense in terms of transitions. So for this week, I had three songs up front, a break, a fourth song and a break, and then a fifth song and a break. Here we go. So this is song one. Let's see here. So I just set a marker. I named what it is. Your love awakens me. Cool. So let's go over here. Let's press the MIDI key. All you're going to do here is you're just going to press your marker and then you're going to press button one on your Ableton page and it, and it should match right up. This is probably worth noting here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go in live and you're going to preferences. I don't have my, um, my mastermind hooked up, but as you can see, when you go into linked MIDI, it should show up here, uh, mastermind PVC, and all you're going to do is select it. And down, down here, you're just going to want to turn it on and that's it. Press the marker, hold down the button. Same thing. You go to number two here. You're going to click the marker. You're going to hold down button two and it should register. And then across the top here, you're just gonna wanna go to this play button and then you're gonna hit whatever button you want to be your play button on your mastermind. Once again, it'll show you the number. And then over here, same thing, your stop button right here, cool. And then over here uh, for tempo, that's my click. I assign my solo click to that, that's optional if you wanna do that. Legit, just press MIDI, press the thing you wanna sign and press the button and it shows up and you're like golden. I don't know if you guys use stops like we do, um, so that way the track just automatically stops. Once you've assigned your MIDI to the mastermind, you need to make sure that whatever MIDI note you were using to stop lines up. So in this case, let's see here, let's go to MIDI right here. It's A minus two, and it's also mapped to channel five. So that's important. So if you're gonna go over here to these, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what this is called, session view. Yeah, Ableton doesn't always make sense to me but it's great. So over here, you just wanna make sure that the MIDI is set to channel five because that's the mastermind. Um, for, for me, it was five. So like, let's say on the RGM thing, you, you set it to MIDI channel seven, you're gonna to wanna to set this to seven just so it's looking for the information in all the right places. Yeah, if you wanna use a stop and if you're not using this, this is kinda of cool, then you don't even have to manually stop your track is you're just gonna go and make a MIDI note, and then yeah, it's the same MIDI note you assigned to the stop, A minus two, so here, watch it, it'll, it'll hit it, and then, ta-da, it's done. Now I'm gonna show you what I did with the dynamic cues. This is pretty cool. Chorus, full band. Great, so you heard it say chorus, full band. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna make a duplicate of this, but you're just gonna wanna go and find the correct cue and move it over here on your track. So usually it's just the segment before. So in this case, if my repeat is gonna be a bridge again, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna cut out bridge, and so here, I'll show you. So this is, it should be like bridge, three, four. Bridge, build it up. Okay, build, bridge, build it up, great. So you're gonna wanna put that there. And then just like the stop, we're gonna make a MIDI track here and we're gonna start assigning some things. Once you do this, you can literally just save this over the session as a new thing every time you make your, um, your stuff for live. So you wanna assign the on button here to the same MIDI thing. Same MIDI thing, MIDI no, MIDI whatever. Um, so for me in this case, it's assigned to C negative one. So that was my hold function. So if you're gonna assign it to a hold function, you do the same thing, you press MIDI, you press the button, and you're gonna hold it down instead of just tapping it. If you hold it, it will show you a different letter and number combination. So you're gonna to wanna to do that. You're gonna assign your power or on off, whatever you wanna call this, to the same one here on cues, dynamic cues, and then your new MIDI channel, which I call repeat. You can call it whatever you want. So yeah, C minus one right here, great. You're gonna to wanna to turn dynamic cues and repeat off and then cues on as if you normally, like, just like you normally would. So let's go into here. So right here, is this, this is E0. And I believe E0 is set to this. Let me see here. Yep. Okay, cool. So yeah, this thing right here, previous and forward marker, you're going to assign that to a note. It doesn't really matter what, as long as it's not conflicting with what you already have here. So in this case, I made it E0. All right, cool. And then you're gonna go down here on your repeat track and you're gonna make a MIDI note for E0, as you can see here. And now, 
What's important here is you want to put this at the beginning of the last measure before the repeat happens. Because with the way Ableton works, it's just going to finish that whatever measure it's on and then repeat once you press it. So the nice thing about doing it this way is rather than having to, you know, you could just assign a button to that repeat marker, but then that kind of leaves room for error and human, and human error is a thing, you know, where you kind of have to get it right on the beat or else it'll restart in a weird way. So this way I'm like, let's just let the computer do it. And all my button is going to do is turn this track on. So that way when it hits it, it's going to activate that at the right time, no matter when I do it. So then the next thing you want to do here is you're going to add a MIDI note. And then this MIDI note is going to be the same one you assigned to these right here. All right, let's see. So yeah, C minus one. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna flip the regular cues back on and then turn these two things off. So that way, when you reach the end, unless you were to press the repeat again, it'll just keep going forward as if it was normal. So let's, let's do it. I don't have mine hooked up, so I'm just gonna say I press my repeat button and watch what happens. Yep, move back. Cool, and then just so you saw, it turned the other two back off with that second MIDI note we made, and then it should just move straight through to the chorus this time. Great. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today. I hope this gives you a good idea or some new ideas on how you can use your RJM, get the most out of it for the weekends. I know for me, this was a big game changer because A, I could repeat things, which I wasn't able to do prior, and that had been something I'd always wondered about. You know, hey, is there a way to repeat things in a usable, easy way with tracks? And the answer is yes, this system is super easy. And like I said, once you have it set up, you can just use this template every single time. And then number two was, is there a way where I don't have to worry about a laptop and can just focus on music directing and playing guitar? And the answer was yes, the RJM is an amazing tool. Super easy to set it up, much easier than I anticipated which, so hats off to RJM, that's an amazing thing. And yeah, you don't have to set your thing up the same way I did. I know I watched a couple other videos of how people did it, and I just took some ideas they had and I built this system. Because they were, they were using clip mode, and I don't use clip mode. And I know a lot of you guys out there don't either, especially if you're on the weekends, because this, I think, arrangement mode is the easiest way to build transitions. So yeah, hopefully this gives you an idea how to get the most out of the equipment you have and makes your job as a music director or just a band person or like, I don't know, whatever you are, better. If you enjoyed this video, I would really love it if you hit the like button, you leave a comment, you hit the subscribe, tell your friends about it. You can follow me on Instagram, at Justin Muncy. I post guitar videos, pictures, all that good stuff if you want to follow me there. And until next time, see you later.